Hey everyone, in today's video, we're going to be comparing the differences between the dev, pro, and max versions of the Flux context model and Comfy UI. I'll walk you through the workflows you can import into Comfy UI and show you the setup guides for both the open source dev version and the pro model using the API in Comfy UI. As many of you know, the Flux context dev model is completely open source and can be run locally for free. The pro model and the max version is accessible only via API and it's known to enhance the prompt that you put to create better results. Some people say the only difference in the version is that they're enhancing the prompt to better easily create good images with less prompts. But I do think they have a different model behind the scenes with better training sets as we're going to be testing these models. Before we get into running these models, you need to download the workflow for these. You can go to my GitHub repo in the link in the description to download both the Flux Context Pro workflow and the Dev workflow. The Flux Context Dev workflow is the same as the video I uploaded previously, so you can follow the detailed guide over there. In short, you just need to download all the respective models from the link in this page and update Comfy UI to the latest to get all the Flux Context nodes. If you would like to run this in the cloud, I've also left the RunPod template for Flux Context Dev in the description below. To run Pro and Max for Flux Context, you need to be able to call the API within Comfy UI. In order to do this, you need to be logged into Comfy UI account and have enough credits. The easiest way to do this is by clicking the settings icon in Comfy UI interface. You can do that by clicking the user button on the top and click on the sign in slash sign out button. Then click on the Comfy UI API key. And in the bottom of the section, there's a need an API key question mark. And you can just click get one here button here and then log into the Comfy UI website with any login method of your choice and go to the API key and create a new API key with any title. You want to copy the API key, navigate back to Comfy UI and click sign in again. And this time click on Comfy UI API key and paste in your Comfy UI key right here. After you log in, there's going to be a credits section where it shows how much credits you have on Comfy UI and click on purchase credits and purchase any amount of credit that you want. The cost to run Flux Context Pro and Max version is 4 cents per generation for Flux Context Pro and 8 cents per generation for Max. And this, the currency is in USD. Once you're logged in and have enough credits to run pro version and the max version on Comfy UI, you're ready to run the workflow. I'm going to load both the workflows for the dev and pro version on Comfy UI. For the first test, I want to test how both models handle generating realistic background when given a photo. I'm going to try to change the background to a winter setting. For the prompt, I typed in change the background to snow covered trees and an icy river with soft falling snow while adding warm light highlights on the girl while keeping the girl's position, pose and appearance unchanged. And this is the result that I got. Comparing all these images side by side, you can see that using the same prompt, the Max and the Pro version produces a much better result. It seemed that the dev model is not recognizes the prompt properly. It's kind of adding a colored background to the setting, but it's not really changing the background at all. So I've tested it again with another prompt, uh, change the background. So I wanted to test it with another prompt, change the background to a lively amusement park with colorful rides. And these three results are what I got for dev, pro, and max model respectively. You can see that the dev model did a pretty good job of changing the background, but in terms of realism, the max and the pro model did a better job. And also in the result of the pro model, you can kind of see the human leg is misgenerated here and the ground material is a little bit odd compared to the max model. I've also tried to change the background of this photo with two people in it. As a prompt, I said, change the background to an African safari setting with a group of lions resting in the grassland. And these are the three results that I have for the dev, max, and the pro model. Same as before, the realism is more consistent in max model and the dev model lacks a bit of realism in the background. I've tried to fiddle around with the prompting in the dev model, but the result was a bit similar and I couldn't make it more realistic than the pro and max model. I've also tried coloring a non-colored cartoon panel. This testing was also done on Reddit, but I've also wanted to try it again myself. And these three images are the results of the three models. All three models seem to do a really good job. 
but Pro and Max version do a slightly better job in terms of details. The color definition seems to be a bit better. I've also wanted to test this product image of this perfume bottle, and I wanted to get this female model to hold that product. So I feed in the product image as the first image, and the female model as the second image, and this is the stitched image result. The prompt that I used is the woman on the right is holding onto the product on the left, and these three results are what I got for both of the models. You can see that the dev model did a good job of maintaining the consistency of the face of the model and the product. I like the result of the dev model more than the pro model. I could have maybe changed the prompt a little bit on the pro model and make the result as similar as the dev and the max model, but I just couldn't get the result to be the same. I like the face consistency of what dev model produced. I've also tried applying this texture pattern of, of flowers onto this perfume bottle and these three are the results that I got. The results for these were very similar but I guess the flux context model have a little bit of a blurry background at the end. But all three models get the job done. I've also tried turning the original realistic image into a Ghibli style with the prompt of transform the photos into Ghibli style art and these three results are what I got. It's interesting that the result was very different from the dev model and the pro and the max model. The pro and the max model have more of an anime style than what the dev model produced. I was able to also get a logo on top of the shirts and these three were the results of the generation. I was able to also get the logo of another language onto the shirts which I had troubles with flux fill model. I've also wanted to test generating side views of realistic character, which I believe would be super useful in training your own Loras. For the prompt, I used generate a side view of this person keeping the same facial features, hairstyle, clothing, and lighting. And these three results were what I got for the dev, pro, and the max version of the model. I would say in terms of this testing, the dev model is on par with the max and the pro model. And the dev model will be super useful in terms of getting the training data sets for the Laura model. However, the quality of the models dramatically differed when I tried to change the background of the character and changing the pose at the same time. For generating different types of backgrounds for the Laura model, I think the Pro and Max version would be much more useful than the Dev model. For the details on creating the training datasets for Laura, I'll be creating this on my next video. I've also wanted to test a realistic image of this cat with the removed military helmet, and these three results were what I got for all the three models. I would say the Pro and Max version generated better result for the head of the CAD, but I think the Flux Context Dev model also produced a pretty good result as well. All these tests weren't to discourage you to use Flux Dev model. In the end, it is a free version that we are able to use without paying, so it is still a very good option. And also, the Pro and Max version is heavily censored, and the dev model, there's currently people working on LoRa's to uncensor this. So in the end, I think the Flux Context dev model will be used a lot in the future. The video was also for very brief testings, so if you had any other interesting testing result, please feel free to share it in the comments down below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll be back with more AI content.